Hello Matrix and welcome to the fourth of 10 videos for Grade 12 Functions brought to you by the Answer Series. This fourth video reminds you of some essential concepts from Grade 11. I have given you a parabola and a straight line. I've given you the x-intercept, the y-intercept and the turning point of the parabola, the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the straight line and the coordinates of the points of intersection. Now we're going to use these two graphs and answer various questions on them. The first questions we want to look at is for what values of x is f of x greater than or equal to g of x? Where is f of x times g of x greater than or equal to naught? And where is f of x divided by g of x greater than or equal to naught? Now, what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and try these three questions, and then we will do them together. All right, so where is f of x greater than or equal to g of x? My parabola is f of x. My straight line is g of x. So where is the parabola above? Above the straight line, in other words, where is f of x greater than or equal to g of x? So it's above the straight line, there. So those are the values I want. My x value here is minus 3, and my x value there is 5. In other words, I'm going from minus 3 up to 5. So when x goes from minus 3, up to 5. Let's have a look at the endpoints. So at minus 3, the two graphs are equal, which is fine because I want where f of x is greater than or equal to g of x. At 5, the two graphs are equal. Again, it's fine. So I can include both the minus 3 and the 5. The next question, where is f of x times g of x greater than or equal to naught? Well, if you want something to be positive, you know that a plus times a plus is a plus, and you know that a minus times a minus is a plus. So you want to see where are both graphs positive or where are both graphs negative. Now, my parabola is positive there, and my straight line is positive there. So where are both graphs positive? They're both positive between those two points. In other words, between 3 over 2 and 6, they are both positive. Now, we will have a look at the endpoints just now. Where are they both negative? Well, my parabola is negative in those two areas, and my straight line is negative there. So where are they both negative? They're both negative from minus 2 going to the left. In other words, I could also have x is less than minus 2. Now, we need to look at the endpoints. At 3 over 2, g of x is 0. That's fine. I can include that because I want where is it greater than or equal to naught. At 6, f of x is 0. That's fine. At minus 2, f of x is 0. That's fine. So I can include all of these endpoints. All right. In 1.3, I've asked you a very, very similar question, except this time, instead of multiplying, we're dividing. So I know that a plus divided by a plus is a plus, and I know that a minus divided by a minus is also a plus. So it is a very, very similar question I'm asking, which means that x can go between 3 over 2 and 6, or x can be less than minus 2. So what is the difference between the two questions? Well, if I take when x is 3 over 2, g of x is equal to 0. Now, I may not divide by 0, so x is not allowed to be equal to 3 over 2. What about 6? Well, f of x is 0, and that's fine, because if f of x is 0, I can have 0 at the top of a fraction. What about the minus 2? That's also fine, because that also belongs to f of x. So in 1.3, I can include the 6 and the minus 2, but I may not include the 3 over 2, because I may not have division by 0. 
In the second example, what I'm asking you is for what values of c does minus x squared plus 4x plus 12 equals c have no real root? Now, the graph of y equals c is a horizontal line. The horizontal line is cutting the parabola twice. I keep going. There comes a time when it cuts the parabola once and then it doesn't cut the parabola at all. Now when I ask you when it has no real roots, where is it? Well that means it's not going to cut the parabola at all. So where does a horizontal line never cut the parabola? It's when it is above the turning point. Now at the turning point my y value is 16. So when c is 16 it is cutting but a Above 16, it's not. In other words, C is greater than 16 will give me no real roots. The second question, I want two distinct, distinct means different, positive real roots. Okay, so if I take a horizontal line here, my graph it cuts it twice, but one of the values is negative. If I take it here, it still cuts it twice, but that x value is negative. If I take it here, it cuts twice, but this x value is zero. Zero is not positive. If I take it just above, the horizontal line is cutting the parabola in two different places, both of which the x values are positive, so that's fine. What happens when I get to the turning point? Well there it's only cutting in one place, which is not fine. So I can have it between there and there. So what are my c values? c must lie between 12 and 16. I cannot include the 12 because then one of my roots was 0. I cannot include the 16 because I only have one root and not two distinct roots. The last question I want to look at is AB is a vertical line with A on the parabola and B on the straight line going between the points minus 3 and 5. So AB is a line that moves between those two graphs. First question I ask you for is to determine an expression for the length of AB and the second one is to get the maximum length of AB. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video, try them and then we will do them together. Alright, so to get the length of AB what I do, it's a vertical line, so I take the y value at A minus the y value at b. So I take the y value of the top graph minus the y value of the bottom graph. The top graph is the parabola, the bottom graph is the straight line. So I take the parabola minus the straight line and I simplify. I now want the maximum length. Now what is happening is this line of this line a b is getting bigger and bigger and then smaller and smaller. That is a quadratic. The coefficient of x squared is negative. So it looks like that. If I want the maximum length, that means I want to know the turning point. How do I find the turning point of a parabola? I use x equals minus b over 2a and I get that x is 1. I then take x is 1 and substitute back into ab and I get that the length of AB, when it is a maximum, is 16. You should now understand these concepts. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.